Well, uh, which one should we start first? As you wish. Let's go then. Okay. Um. So, let's just, uh, as an introduction, this is going to be our, um, hopefully monthly recap of events, things that happened, shop things. Uh, just anything really to talk about. It's kind of our version of a podcast thing, I guess so. Yeah, that's something that you can definitely listen to if you don't want to watch, or you can watch to see us. But yeah, mostly it's about what we say, and what we're going to say is really anything that we have in our mind, mostly telling you what we've been doing lately, um, but also things about our life here. How is your first summer in Japan, Aaron? So far, it is too dang hot, let me tell you. (laughs) The weather here is... Uh, interesting to say the least bit, unpredictable at best. Um, yes. And that's because of where we're located here um, in Hashima, in Gifu Prefecture. Oh, this is all over Japan. Because wherever you are in Japan, you are between mountains and the sea, which means that the weather is just messy. And you look at the weather forecast and you're like, oh, great, tomorrow it's going to be sunny. And then the next day it's like super windy and rainy. And oh, yes. like, what happened? Rains all day. All the other way around. So. At yeah, least there crazy. are no tornadoes here, though. I want to say that. That's true. I, we have sometimes we have pretty strong typhoon, so you yeah, know, yeah. no tornadoes, but still, even though this year so far so good, <laughs> we're actually supposed to be in the middle of a typhoon right now, but it's pretty sunny and yeah, it's rather nice calm. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't so hot, it would be such a nice day outside today. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. I think it's safe to say I've more or less gotten pretty situated here now. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of interesting things that I haven't had to do before, like you know, register at the um, city hall, uh, you know, insurance plans, all that kind of fun adult stuff that uh, people, you know, you, you kind of learn about and stuff like that before. But coming from America and since college and beforehand living with my parents, just because you know, why not? You know, saves money, mm-hmm. it's affordable. Yeah. But then moving to another country, living alone, <laughs> it's, you know, maybe good. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things I have to yeah. take care of now that I just didn't really understand a whole bunch before. Um, but that's it's. Good. I mean, that's a very intense experience, and that's how you grow up. So that's nice. Yeah, it's also, <laughs> the at least here, I feel like, and. Um, Maybe this might be true depending on where you live, but it's not such a hard place to move into. Oh, yeah. Um, there are hard things to do to move here, yeah. but once you're here and you kind of understand how everything works, it's it's pretty smooth after that. Because everyone is so helpful and, you know, wherever you go, they just understand what you need, even though you may not be able to say it, you know, because they don't understand English, of, of course. Yeah. But even if you don't say it, they will still understand what you need. Uh, everything is very well organized. So, you know, if you're going to this counter, they will know why you're here and they will do it for you, whatever you do. Or even if you don't get what's happening at all, they will just do everything right. And then you just have to sign and that's them. <laughs> no. yeah, it, it, yeah, very true. Um, I was a little bit, I mean, I didn't film any of it because it was the first time going to City Hall and I just felt kind of weird, you know, like I don't want to just, you know, hi, right? <laughs> it's also just not how I feel like I would have done that anyway, but um, yeah, they everything's very organized and if you know what you need and if you have like forms and stuff like that, then you can get everything. You just show them and then like, oh, I understand. Yeah. Um, and it helps to have someone who can speak Japanese. Uh, with That's you, sure. I had um, <laughs> the wonderful Tomomi-san uh, that worked here at the Kajiba to help uh, facilitate that. <laughs> um, and she said there was stuff that she, she, uh, she said that maybe even you might have had like a little bit of like a <laughs> blank spot for like, oh, I don't know what this is. You know, it's yeah. a super like official document that almost no one ever touches until unless they're doing something like this. So. That's all taken care of out of the way, thank goodness. I was able to rent an apartment through Asana-san. <laughs> that was also very generous and helpful of him. Um, and then, of course, you were helping me by letting me stay with you for a few days before everything really got sorted. Um, and now we've we've been here, uh, uh, what, since since May? Yeah, mid, yeah, mid-May. You arrived on the 16th, if I'm not mistaken. So, I believe 17th, so, yeah, yeah, something like that. So 
By yeah. the time we're filming this, it's been one, two, three months? No, oh, three months. Yeah, about three months. Wow. I keep thinking it's four, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, three months. That's good. I'm also three months here at the shop. I think you're getting pretty used to everything, how things are happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's it's definitely different. Um, then it's, it's, it's hard to say because I haven't had much experience as an apprentice in America, so there's nothing really to compare it to. Um, and, you know, you, you have people who tell stories like, oh, all you're going to do is chop charcoal and things like that. And it's like, well, yes, but also here at, at <laughs> Asana Kedia, um, you know, the normal of making of the kitchen knives and, you know, other things like that. There's, there's other, <laughs> the apprentices don't just chop charcoal the whole time, but it's a big and important part of, yeah, of the, of the apprenticeship, you know, um, and I'm, and I'm learning how to do all of that. Um, <laughs> hopefully I'll get faster soon, but it's, you know, um, you just have to get used to it. Uh, but it's, it's definitely been a very interesting experience so far, I have to say. Definitely. Yeah. And like when you're saying that, you know, the typical image a lot of people have, I mean, at least in the blacksmithing or swordsmithing world, is that you start your apprenticeship and for maybe one year you're just cleaning the shop and cutting charcoal and that's it, right? Um, of course, we do the things <laughs> a lot, but that's maybe, let's say, 20% of what we're doing, maybe even less. And we are also learning a lot of real stuff. And I'm not sure if it's specific to here as an occasion. Yeah, I kind of think it is. Um, but the pace is just completely different from everything you could expect. It's and, not even consistent. <laughs> oh yeah, it's completely <laughs> consistent. It really depends on what needs to be done. Um, it's a very realistic approach. If they need something to be done, then they will teach us and ask us to do it. And I think the best example of this is what happened in June. Um, they had three swords that needed to be finished by the middle of July. And so, uh, especially what takes a long, what, they were already forged. So what would take a long time then was the polishing process. And they knew that if only Asano-san and the other apprentice, Takuchi-san, were working in it, it would never work. Uh, they would not be on time. So what they did is that they taught me how to do it, or at least the basics of sword polishing, and then said, okay, now you're up, and you just have to polish this sword. And I was like, um, okay. I started my apprenticeship like four months ago, and now I'm supposed to polish a Japanese sword. Are you kidding me? But like, this is not how it's works. This is not the or like, it's like it's okay. But this isn't yeah, like I, I'm happy to do it, but that's not how it's supposed to be. So anyway, somehow managed to do an acceptable job on it. Um yeah, it was fun. But it shows like how it works here. It's just if they need you to do something, they're gonna teach you and then you have to do it. And that's really what Asano san tells us regularly that we need to be ready because we never know when we will have to step up. And when we need to step up, it means that we really need to do it. It's not just like they want us to, it's just some clients, customers somewhere are waiting for the product. And if we don't deliver, the whole team is going to be in trouble. Right. And I get that it's challenging. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's not like one person does everything. You know, one person knows how to do everything. But, you know, um, at least for right now, as an, as an example, um, Takashi san, the, our, our senpai, or the uh, first apprentice, at least. Uh, before us, rather, yeah, yeah, yeah. first. Um, uh, he, he forges most of the things uh, at the moment, like, uh, so like kitchen knives, we'll go through, forge them. We will we have prepped them for him to forge. Um, then he does, and then we, we uh, have recently taken them and then processed them to the point of to hardening process and, you know, it goes through that. And so everyone pretty much touches, uh, you know, the yeah. same I mean, the, the finished last, project. The last batch of kitchen knives we were making, like the ones, I think we finished, what, five, six uh, this week. And I can, I'm pretty sure that everyone at the shop did something on this kitchen knife. Yeah. Everyone yeah. touched it. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and so there's also that thing where, you know, like, oh, you know, this came from the shop. Like, oh, the, the Sansan made this, you know, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, yes and no, you know, it's just like any other shop, um, uh, unless you truly know what the process is for making it, um, you know, the, it, it may be all hand done or mostly hand done, but it's just, it, it really depends on what the process is, and for here, we use a combination of, you know, 
um, hand processes and, and processes that are just sped up by machines, but not really, um, you know, machine done. Yeah, it's not like it's automated or anything. Right. It's, we are using some uh, mechanical tools, let's say, um, yeah. you know, like, for example, we're going to be sending using a belt sender uh, for most of the process and only doing the final polish or the final um, sharpening by hand with a, I mean, with a stone. But when we're doing with the belt sender, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen it on our Instagrams. Um, it's still like someone holding the knife and adjusting and everything. It's not like we put it in a machine and wait for a result. Yeah, so if you've ever purchased one of the fine items from the store here, um, it's all done by hand. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, enjoy it. Know that yeah, yeah. we all have well, have practically touched these things. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier that you know because it comes from Asano Kaji, I even have the image of that it was done by the master swordsmith Asano San. Maybe most of the process was done by the apprentices, but the quality check at the end right. was done by the master, and you know it means that the quality is there. Um, whoever did it, if something is wrong, he will see it and he will say, okay, that's not good. You just redo if it can be redone or we forget about this knife. It's just, it can be the outlet in the best case scenario or right. basically trash. <laughs> it happens. Oopsie. Yeah. And, yeah, um, and, and like Sam said earlier, the, depending on, on the week or even the day, it may change to uh, I'll, I'll either be taking care of the the grounds or the garden area one day, and the next day I'm chopping charcoal, and Sam could be polishing the sword one day, and the next day sanding uh, the kitchen knives, you know, for to be ready to be um, sharpened the next stage. You know, it's just like or cutting charcoal, or, or also <laughs> I, I was in the middle of sharpening, uh, not sharpening, polishing the sword, and I was so excited because oh, tomorrow I'm gonna be polishing the sword again, and then I arrive in the morning. And they're like, we're going to quench some kitchen knives tonight. So we need a lot of very finely cut uh, charcoal, very small, very regular pieces of charcoal. Um, it's taking forever to do. And we need someone who's experienced in cutting charcoal. So Sam, please. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have this kind of days. Sometimes you have very high expectations and you think you're going to do something very enjoyable. And not really. Now, speaking of charcoal, it, um, just the throughout the, the the task that we have here, I found that you know just the small differences between uh, America and uh, Japan. Uh, for instance, most of the um, I guess medium to large size face respirators mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> they don't fit me here. So <laughs> I mean, it, it's stuff like that where it's like oh. That's neat, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, and um, something else that is is in, interesting, at least to me, noticeably, is the way that uh, we repel mosquitoes here. <laughs> um, it's just these little. Um, it's almost like incense, yeah, it's but it's, it's. I mean, essentially, it is. I guess a yeah, yeah, yeah. um, little spiral, and you just light on the fire, and uh, it, it it does pretty well to keep them back, but. Depending on the day, it may or may not. Um, <laughs> but on average, it does, you know, 50 per to 60 percent. You yeah, know. it's like 60. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes you're like focusing on your work. You have the, the small insect repellent incense right next to you, and you see the mosquito being like, zzz, 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 and you have to focus. Yeah. I mean, and they're, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> That means there, at least back home, there are memes that in, in Memphis, where it's like the mosquitoes are like sucking the, the repellent out of like the spray bottle <laughs> and then like coming and landing on you and, and still, you know, I'm like, ah, yes, oh, oh, negative, you know. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> one of the many things we have to endure in summer in Japan, and especially this place is super, I mean, okay, that's all over Japan, but this place is super humid because we have all this uh, yard and we're using water quite a lot in the, you know, work. So right. we just, there is water in and around the uh, shop and that's it. We cannot really do anything about it. Yeah, and, and recently um, with the weather here, it's gotten so hot that we've, um, we need to start coming earlier and having a longer lunch break and it's definitely like, you know, especially when Takashi-san the other day was... Oh my god. 
<laughs> oh, we have to tell the story. <laughs> I mean, you 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 saw him after, like right after. His face was red. I mean, because he was. Uh, I think the word they're looking for is baked. He <laughs> <laughs> <It> was baked. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll let you find out. I mean, it, no, but um, yeah, it, it was just like wow, like it, he it looked like he had slept outside in the sun for way too long because of how much radiant heat was around his workspace. Yeah. So, um, so maybe to explain to the viewers, uh, and I don't know if you got this part because I think Asano-san was explaining in Japanese uh, the day before or the week before, um, last oh this week actually on Tuesday. Uh, Asano-san had our senpai, the first apprentice, Takeuchi-san, um, do the process of folding and forge welding the steel to prepare the tamahagane for making a Japanese sword. He had him make it, um, basically, what he told him is, since it's very hot, I want you to experience how it is to do this process with this weather, and you fold it until you reach your limits. So it was not like you fold it 10 times or 20 times or even 100 times. It's just find your limits. And so that's what he was doing on Tuesday. He was finding his limits. Well, he, and yeah. he's been in there um, forging in the dark with a super, super hot fire. Because to do this, you're working a pretty big piece of yeah. tamahagami. Four and you need a lot of heat. Yeah, yeah. So and I, 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 mm, I always feel bad about saying these things because what I might think it is is wrong, and if I say something, they're like, "Oh, it's actually this temperature." So it's okay. We're if, no if, experts. If, if I, if I miss to say, but it's supposed, to, you know, whatever temperature is, I'm, it's fine, whatever. So I'm not going to say it this time, but it's it's at the forge welding temperature for how I'm going to do to be folded and forge welded into a hot, homogeneous um, billet. Um, so that's what the process of, of folding is really able to do. Um, yeah, it was it was exceptionally hot that day. On top of like Sam said, just it was like it hadn't been over five hours. I think probably seven hours. Yeah, yeah. straight up, just folding the steel. Basically, no breaks except like when the steel was heating up in the forge. Sometimes he would like go outside, uh, take some like put some water on his face, uh, take a quick shower or something. But it was like maybe a five minute breaks at max. Uh, from time to time, no longer extended break, no lunch break, anything. He started around like eight, I think, mm-hmm. and was done yeah around three, four. I'm not sure exactly, but a long time. Hats off to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> and his face, yeah, we should have taken a picture. <laughs> it was like it looked like sunburned, but it was actually forge burned. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sunday. Uh, yes. <laughs> Not really looking forward to it. Maybe the reason I love winter, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know. That, that's what Asano San was explaining. As right. Well. Like, you know, if you have to do this process because you've had an order for a story in winter, you're very happy. If it's in the middle of the summer, you still have to do it. So I would imagine a lot of it's done at night, though, anyway. Um, at least not like yeah, yeah, temper- yeah. just like it, you know, was typically something that you would do at night unless you could completely control the light in your surrounding area. Yeah, and I think like Asano san is someone who wakes up very, very early, like five in the morning every day. And he once mentioned that when he's doing this kind of process, he tends to wake up even earlier and start very early. So that's right. He would do it like before, before dawn, most of it. Yeah, now it is, you don't have to worry about it getting so hot. Oh, I mean the heat from the fog from the fire is still there. <laughs> yeah, just literally listening. Walk outside, you're not like, oh, what the heck? It's just like it was inside. No, but um, so yeah, the um, soon, pretty soon, we are gonna have an open house where we're making food. Oh, was it? Is it July? We just did the uh, testing, or I. So I couldn't tell. I think it was like the last week in July or something. It, it, it was sometime in July, yeah. and, and I, I believe it was the last or second to last week. Yeah. Um, we used the interesting brick oven uh, here to see if we could uh, make the food that we were, mm-hmm. um, I guess, tasked to make, trying to make, or yeah. see what could be done essentially with, with that oven. Um, uh, 
I've I've messed with some pesky brick ovens before, but <laughs> this this one is <laughs> it's a little a little it, it built different for sure. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I think we both kind of figured out afterwards, even if it wasn't exactly that's what we why wanted we to tried do. you know the first time and then on the day, so that's twenty eighth of August. Yeah, this month. I'm going to be ready, um, hopefully, and I don't know how many people are going to come, but we may be up to cooking for like... The last story 15, I saw from months. the from Sonic's on this Instagram yeah. said that spots are filling up fast. Ooh. So I don't know. <laughs> it could be, it you could know, be spots marketing. filling up fast, but not so much. <laughs> yeah. Or there's a lot of ones that are filling up fast, so, you know, um, it's, it's interesting. But you're going to be making quiche, yes. right? Um, and I will be making a Memphis style American barbecue. Um, it's gonna be fun. And we're also gonna be the instructors, teachers for the people who come because the ba- the concept is like at first it's an open shop where people come and we let them do make small things, uh, forge some small items. And so we're gonna be teaching them, showing them how to do it. And at some point, I don't know exactly how it's going to articulate, but at some point we have to switch to the cooking site and get everything ready for lunch. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to like start with it in the oven at the very beginning of the day, at yeah. least one of them, yeah. um, and just every now and then check on it, have someone else do that. But because yeah. um, <laughs> bar- the, the, the barbecue takes a while, I don't know if everyone will be familiar with it, but for the most part, I think our audience will be familiar with American barbecue. Um, yeah, depending on the size of the meat, taking work from four to six hours, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low and slow, <laughs> wrapped in tin foil. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting thing where we are going to have to be kind of presenting and explaining what the food is. Um, and I was so nervous about something like that because I know it's okay that I speak English for it all. But it's it's still like I feel a little bit you know like oh I I should try to speak it in Japanese but it's you know it, it's one of those things where it's it's I'm I'm still studying and you know um, I I'm getting better at it um, having your say um, staying at my apartment um, which is uh, one of the um, children of uh, Asana-san. and. Um, Having him there and us speaking together, uh, there's certain things like, oh, I'm able to, to, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is this in English and whatnot, and he's helping me with some Japanese and stuff, so, you know, kind of smaller responses and, and things, I'm, I'm, you know, he's like, you know, the first day, <laughs> I'm just nervous, so I didn't really speak much Japanese at all, but um, it's, it's slowly getting better yeah. and better, so, yeah, yeah. and for being here for just about three months, you know, I'm in... Uh, despite what you know, people say it's like, like when, when you move to any new country where there's a different language, it's always good to try to learn before you go. But depending on your situation, it may just be difficult to start or seriously learn um, until you are there. And um, if you do that, don't feel bad about it. Um, it's, it's it's something that you don't want to regret, uh, but it can be tough. Uh, so it's just, it's just one of those things that is definitely, um, I, I wouldn't really say a struggle point, but it's, it, it can, it can be difficult when you first move to a different country and, um, especially if you don't have anyone around like Sam or people at Asan Kajia that will help you with, um, by speaking English and stuff like that, um. Yeah, I think in your case, you're in a relatively English-speaking environment, um, so that helps. Yeah. If you were going to a more traditional uh, smoothie where no one speaks English at all, <laughs> it would be harder. It, it would it'd be a bit more difficult, for sure. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm, I mean, this is a very lucky opportunity in, in, in general, but even more so that um, there are the number of English speakers here <laughs> that are here. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's <laughs> lucked out. <laughs> it's good. It's oh, can we talk about um Shin on Abe? Oh. We just mentioned, hey, this happened. 
That's crazy. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part out. I don't think we're going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, let me think. Uh, hmm. I think we already covered quite a lot of ground. We did cover a lot of ground. I mean, we didn't like make a list of everything we've been doing, but you know, we've been talking about it a lot, so. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, I, people don't really need to know yeah. about like, we signed Hoppos this past week, there's some of that, you know. I mean, we hit on like, you know, the cooking I think stuff. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's something that's interesting is to see like, um, the kind of how quickly the priorities can shift and how our focus also went working and shift quite quickly and yeah, let me try to say it a bit better. But yeah, what well, something that happened uh, over June and July especially is that um, by mid July we needed to get the three swords ready. So we were doing like Musi Takerson and we were doing a lot of polishing on the sword and then finishing them and everything. And then immediately after we were done with this. Uh, Asana-san was like, okay, we are short of kitchen knives and we have uh, orders, we have clients waiting, so you guys have to make a lot of kitchen knives right now. So it was quite a like 180 degrees turn uh, where suddenly we had to focus on one task and just make kitchen knives all day, all week. I mean, we've been doing 100% kitchen knife work for like two, three weeks. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> yeah, that's quite crazy. So. And I think right before, even like before this, their plan was to teach me and then Aaron how to make the cutlery, right? And so we started just one day, uh, we were working on the cutlery and kind of learning the basic on how to make it. And then the next day, Asano San was like, oh, actually, just forget about this and just focus on the kitchen mats. And now, uh, for August, we know that when we come back from the quick summer vacation, yes, we're in summer vacation right now. And when we come back from the summer vacation, we will focus on the cutlery, so we are getting ready to switch focus completely again and make something completely different. That's very interesting to see, depending on the demand and what people want at this time, we keep changing what we're doing and it's quite crazy. Yeah, especially, um, and uh, it's, it's a little bit different for both of us too, in the sense that Sam, like, like you, you haven't really, like, before coming here and doing this, you're blacksmithing background has, you know, just, uh, yeah, didn't exist. Now you're like, all right, you're going to forge this and do this, this, like, uh, drop it. Don't worry about that. A month later, hey, so remember that thing you did like a month yeah, ago? Yeah. You're going to have to do that again. Uh, so, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and and since I, I, I haven't really forged much since I've been here, uh, this just because, you know, it um, any, any help you can get with anything, you're just gonna do it anyway, and there there hasn't really been much need for me to forge yet. So uh, you know, we'll we'll see. It'll happen eventually. You know, uh, I think it will happen very soon. Um, <laughs> you, you know how many sets of cutlery you have to make? Oh, how many? Okay. Well, I think at the moment we're somewhere around fifty that have been already ordered. 50. So yes, that people are waiting for. And so that you know, there are three pieces for each set. Four. Or four. Yeah, there's a little rest. Oh, right. Not including the rest. So. <laughs> so it's a fork, knife, and spoon, plus a little rest for putting them on the table. Um, and it's, um, I mean, you could think that, you know, cutlery, yeah, it's just cutlery, right? But it takes quite a lot of work. Um, it's pretty high end, fancy cutlery. Very cool. Yeah, the, it's, it's, um, I'm trying off the top of my head. I can't really think of many artists. Um, like uh, specifically, but it's 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 um very you know it, it's much closer to as far as weight goes the the kind of stuff you would find at the store or anything like that and and so imagine us having to you know work down a piece of, of material that starts out maybe anywhere from two to three times as as heavy as it and then what we do to it gets it to the stage where it's nice comfortable easy to hold and you know it's um uh, safe to use and things like that so it's and also looks good right and and it's pretty to look at and hold while you eat um oh, we should have brought some to show them uh, is there not i don't think so uh -oh. but, yeah 
decline. Or you can always, as always, check our Instagram if you yeah, want more pictures because we have tons of stuff Instagram, there. Instagram, there's the actual um, you know, the website, website of Asano yeah. where you can look <laughs> at all this and buy it yourself or for someone else. Christmas is coming up, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Four months ahead. <laughs> well, you know, better to get it earlier than that. Yeah. Um, especially if someone has ordered 50 of them, right? Yeah. If they try to get their order in. I thought just out. one person. But so I think there's a restaurant that ordered 20 pieces. And then just individuals, like, you know, the people who came for night making oh, experience. Right. Just go to the shop, basically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> Uh, and so, yeah, they, they gave us a lot of work. That's good. That's very good. Oh, yeah. For, for people who don't know, um, Santa Gia has a knife making experience where you can come to the shop and you can make your own small um, knife. Small? Well, depending, depending <laughs> you can on the size you choose. Piece, yeah? right, you pick um, your piece. So you can make it the blade from this to roughly this. So it can be pretty big. Mine is like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, the, the, depending on what you you choose. Um, but um, Sanasan will um kind of walk you and whoever else is with you through the process of how in English. Um, yeah, uh, uh, how to forge a, a knife here, and you know, it's uh, I I've seen some, uh, or at least I would know that some people might think that the, what at least that you're forging here isn't really an advanced thing, and that's just as a baseline. So that anyone who comes here isn't either overwhelmed, you know, but it's also important to know that something that is like this, while it may not be difficult for you, it's important to establish a, you know, kind of um, easy, understandable relationship. And you can't like do that. There's something that's so difficult to do. Um, but that, that's also something I think it's very, very well made. Um, right, they right. probably thought about it a lot and tried various uh, options. And so the way we do it here is that we prepare the rough shape of the knife. And then what you do is with this very rough shape, you make, you make the knife. So we kind of put into the rough shape what you need to succeed. And we make sure that you won't really struggle. But at the same time, you're still making the knife. And you do the most important part for sure. You, you do 90% of the job. But we just you know remove a little bit of risk. So that everyone is just so happy with the result and right. have their own knife. It, no matter the skill level, and that's kind of the point. Like, you don't have to know anything about blacksmithing or metal or whatever to come and do this, um, or the knife making experience rather. So it's 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 if you're ever in Japan and you plan on being in the Gifu uh, Pixia Prefecture or um, Nagoya, you know, and you can just stop by. We're right next to Shinkansen and the bullet train. So if you're going from Tokyo to Kyoto, your train is gonna go through Gifu Hasima, and you're gonna be like literally 200 meters away from the shop. So just stop there, go down the train, go enjoy your day at the shop, and then you go back to Kyoto. Yeah, I don't know what that is in feet, so I'm not even gonna try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a mile. Yeah. It's not bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so what what else i think we've you know going at everything oh um in the future if there's certain topics you'd like us to kind of talk about or mention or if we have enough um information to go over it whatever it may be you know it doesn't have to be necessarily related to japan or kajiba but if it is it makes more sense um, <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, let us know in the comment section or feel free to um, maybe Instagram. Yeah, you can reach out to any of us through Instagram. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll put them in the description since we can't use um, what are those things called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot the name. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. in the video just yet. Mm. Um, yeah, hopefully, we'll start growing some more too soon and. Uh, we'll have another opportunity to make another recap video. Um, it just by the grace of Japan that we had a holiday today that we were able to have some time to film this, and I will potentially um, be able to edit all of this quickly and get it out, and people can watch it and enjoy. Yes. So yeah, we're gonna get back to enjoy our. Five days, four days. Yeah, <laughs> Very <pretty>. Japanese. <laughs> um, and we'll be back at work on Tuesday.
Good. All right. Yeah. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.